Hey, hey, hey. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Movement again. Good. There was no collar correction in that. Hatch, you are a genius, Bubba. Hi guys, Ethan here with Standing Stone Kennels and we've got Hatch for some really cool stuff to begin. We've had a lot of requests for, how do I get my dog steady to wing, shot, and fall? And uh, it takes kind of the right situation to be able to put all these things together and we have that. His name is Hatch. He has done all of the prerequisites to starting this training. Now, this is very important. If you want to follow our program, our philosophy, you need all of these. One, he has gone through basic introductions to pointing birds. He's well trained. He has had birds shot over him. He's run in braces and knows how to handle working with other dogs. He has gone, and this is one of the most important ones, he's gone hunting. And we've killed a lot of birds over him. He went to South Dakota with me. He went uh, all over the place. He's killed a lot of birds. Now he's ready for more formal work. He is um, today already collar conditioned to woe. I mentioned that as one of the prereqs, which means that he's comfortable wearing a belly collar. And what we're going to be doing, the kind of idea behind this process is once we've gotten a dog steady to wing, which would be our standard level of steadiness, they're gonna break with the bird. To take them beyond that, we kind of go back to the basics, starting with our positive pigeon drill again, but in this situation, we take away the chase. Now, when we work through this progression, we're gonna do a number of different things. One of which is going to be, um, first, teach him to be steady to wing. That's going to involve birds flying and the flight of the bird and him able to stand that. Once he is good with that, that may be anywhere from one session to 10 sessions, depending on the dog. Then we move into steady to shot and we incorporate a gunfire into a woe training session. Once we have both of those down, we move beyond that into steady to wing and shot and we incorporate them together. And then we move to birds that he's actually going to be pointing. So to be in these beginning stages, all of this is gonna happen directly from me. Now, to get started, I've got a bag of pigeons. Pigeons are our friend and are going to be a very important part of the steadiness work. Um, there are other ways that you can do this, but this is the best. So we're gonna fit him with his belly collar. Now, we had a question about this and I never even really thought about the confusion. This is just a standard e-collar. I'm using DT Systems H20 1820 model because it has a toggle switch to go back and forth between this collar on his neck and this collar that I'm gonna about to put, let me make sure it's on, on his belly. So once we get this fit here, we want it to be about as snug as you would put the collar on his neck. Dogs often puff up here. Um, as they feel a little bit of pressure, they'll fill up with air. So you may have to check this after he gets moving around and comfortable, but good. Okay. So he's up moving around and I'm going to let him chase one to begin with. Just so that we get some comfort level in movement. Come on, buddy. All right. Now we're gonna move right into no longer chasing. And I'm gonna show you how we can break this down into, I take off my microphone there. Um, I'm gonna show you how we can break this down to make it easier on him. I've got stimulation set, okay. I'm gonna find what level we're gonna be on again. It's been a little while since we've used a belly collar on hatch, okay. So I'm rolling through levels. I got to about a three, maybe a four and that's when I saw him stop. So he was ignoring one and two, and then when I got to three on the collar, I'm using the Nick button. So tap, tap, tap as he was moving until he stopped. I'm gonna do it one more time, make sure we're on the right level here. I'm on that four, okay. Nick, 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 he stopped, good. Now, we're going to put separation between him and the bird. Now, can you see this all right if I'm going out this way? Perfect. So I've got him here standing with, whoa, gentle reminder here. And then this bird is going to leave behind me. It puts me directly between him and the bird, which is gonna make this process easier. If he tries, which he may or may not try to move, we're going to stop him with the belly collar. It's what we've got it on. We're gonna use light. You're gonna 
Those aren't real words. We're gonna utilize the belly collar through this entire steadiness process, all the way back to shooting birds over him in the field. So, bird comes out this way. Whoa. Good. Now he's gonna make this look pretty simple because he's a pretty dang cool dog, but if you're doing it this way with your dog, you're gonna see very similar results. Introducing steadiness the way that I'm showing you right now is the easiest and the fastest way that I have found to getting consistent steadiness results with the least amount of pressure possible. I think that's the biggest thing that I see being made as a mistake is um, people totally go to the use of pressure uh, and excessive amounts of pressure to try and stop a dog or break a dog to be steady to wing shot and fall. And I'm gonna show you that this method is going to be conditioning, and reps to condition the behavior that we're looking for. Right now, all we're gonna be talking about is taking away the chase. All of these games end up being the same, minus we take away the chase. So I will tell you if I use any e-collar, which I have not had to yet with that first bird. Uh, pigeon, be gone. Thank you. Good, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. so one tap, Nick button here. One tap on the collar because he started even just a little bit of pressure moving. Um, he started, excuse me, a little bit of movement. He was backpedaling just a little bit. That's kind of eh, what that is, is a lot of dogs load in order to take off. And when he knows he shouldn't be taking off, that load becomes kind of this backpedaling movement. And just that gentle reminder of one tap on the collar got him stopped. Now. He's doing really well with this so far. We're gonna to start to incorporate that flight of the bird to coming more toward him, less separation uh, with me involved in the middle. So this bird now is gonna come more. You see this okay? Good, I'm gonna reset him. Okay, good. Whoa, good. So instead of that bird coming out behind me now, it's gonna be coming out more at this uh, approximately 90 degree angle to him. Uh, uh, uh. Now you saw that move, right? We got a small correction, a small handle in. I gave the verbal, uh, 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 and tapped on the collar. We don't want to start hollering, whoa, whoa, whoa. He already knows he's supposed to be woeing, and what we're doing is correcting him for making the mistake of moving. Again, it was one nick on the collar on a level four on his belly. That's what level's working really well for him, and he stopped right away. Good. Now, one of the first questions that we get from people that are moving through this process is, how long does he have to wear this belly collar? Well, the longer he wears the belly collar, the easier that you're able to make this transition from not steady to wing shot and fall to steady to wing shot and fall. And we're all about what's easiest on the dog. Here's another one coming out at that 90 degree angle. Now, this 90 degree angle um, puts drastically less me in between him and the bird. And when that happens, it gives him that want to take off and chase that bird here. A little bit of loading. Again, no actual movement forward or backward. Let's do another one here. Good. Now we're going to make this slightly more difficult. And then I'm gonna call this the end of the session. Here we're going to get cut that angle again. This bird's gonna fly within just a few yards of him and land on the ground. Be gone, pigeon. Come on, what are you? That pigeon is just hanging hanging over there. We got a couple new birds. If you follow some of our other vlogs, these are these guys' first few flights and they're not <laughs> doing so well so far. Um, they got a little work to do. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do another one here. We'll go back this way. He may try and pivot to be able to see where that bird goes. That movement will be corrected just the same. Come on, get out of here. Good, good job. No movement there. Heck, I've got a couple more birds in our bag. He's doing really well. If we were to see any kind of, if this was a constant correcting process where every single time he's jumping all over the place, I'm gonna probably keep this session a little bit shorter. Right now he's standing really well, so we're going to um, solidify the fact that he's got a pretty good understanding of this and know that I'm gonna be able to move to 
steady to shot here in my next session with him. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Again, the verbal ah, uh, ah. Uh. I went tap, tap at the same time I was saying ah, uh, ah. Uh. He's going to feel collar with that and then he stopped. That was all just pivoting to try and mark where that bird's going, which is the signs of a good bird dog. Good. Okay. Um, which is one of the things that I mentioned. He needs to have been out and exposed to hunting and had this experience. When we start taking away this chase, the game gets slightly less fun, especially for a dog that doesn't really know, um, ex doesn't have as strong an understanding of what the actual game that we're playing is called hunting. So it's so why it's important to have a strong foundation of all of the birds been killed over you, sir. All right. Um, he's doing really well. I'm going to show you what this next little transition is going to be. It's going to actually be um, stopping to wing. So we have standing here with wing. This is the easiest part. And then we're going to actually utilize this bird to stop him. This is going to be slightly more difficult. Now, the fact that he's virtually moved none is going to, it says to me that he's ready for this. If he'd been bouncing all over the place trying to chase these birds, I would say he's not ready for it. We need a few more sessions. But what we're going to do now is get movement with Hatch. He's going to be walking. I'm going to let the bird go and then stop him. So the bird's going to start being associated with stop moving, not just stand still. Good. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Good. So tap, tap, tap. And you may ask, why didn't I say, whoa? I want the bird to say, whoa. This is just teaching him through um, basic association with birds now that birds mean to stop and stand still. Good. Okay. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Movement again. Good. There was no collar correction in that. Hatch, you are a genius, Bubba. Shh. Uh, 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 uh. Good. Whoa. Now, I told you guys that I was going to probably need to check this collar. I should have. It was maybe a, a, a hole loose, but not bad. Overall, I could see that he was feeling it. He's definitely responding. So, heel. Hey, heel. Good. Good job. Whoa. All right, guys. So, this is step one. In this steadiness process, we utilize pigeons to help him to understand that he's going to be able to stand through the flush of the bird and the flight of the bird. And then we were act actually able to move into allowing him to stop with the flush of the bird. Um, this is a really great first session for him. Next thing we'll be doing is uh, this same kind of process with gunfire, both a blank pistol or a, a shotgun popper. Thanks guys for watching. Um, this is Hatch. I'm the guy with the pink gun, and we will see you shortly. Mm -hmm.